Now we're going to talk about getting user input in Haskell. So let's clear everything under main equals do. And we want to get user input, right? So let's say we want to get someone's name. Uh, so we can start with giving them a prompt, right? So we have to ask them, hey, please enter your name or something like that. So we can say put string ln, just like we've been doing. And remember, you can either use parentheses and then put your string in there, or you can just put a space and put your string if you're not doing concatenation. Um, so we're going to say, please enter your name. I'm going to put a colon and space after. And I'm going to push save. And we're just going to make sure we have this so far. So reload, run. Please enter your name. Great. And now we need to get the user input, right? This is the new thing. Um, so to get user input, we're going to store, we're going to get the input and then store it inside of a, we're going to call it a variable for now. So we can say uh, name, because that's going to be our variable name that the user inputs. And instead of saying equals, we need to say, we need to use this arrow notation. So in this case, we'll explain the arrow notation in further detail uh, later on. But the arrow says, hey, we're going to take whatever this is on the right hand side, and we're going to store it inside of this name variable on the left hand side. And to get some input from the user, we type get line. So get line is another built in function. It reaches out and uh, gives the user a chance to put in something, put in a name. And then it takes that name and it stores it inside of this name variable using this arrow notation. So instead of equals, we're using an arrow in this case whenever we get input from a user. Okay, so now we have the name inside of our name variable. And then we can again use put string ln to print the user's name, right? So put string ln name. So we say, hey, please enter your name. It goes to a new line. And then we say, and then we prompt the user for their input. And we use this error notation here to store it, whatever they put in, into this name variable. And then we print this name variable to the console, or we put it to the console. So, because it's going to be a string. Everything that comes in through get line is a string. So that's why we need to use put string ln. Control S to save. Let's go over to WinGHCI. Let's clear that. Refresh and run it says please enter your name okay Austin I'm gonna hit enter and it prints out my name I accidentally added an extra backslash there so let's run it one more time please enter your name Austin enter and it prints out my name so now let's print out a full sentence instead of just printing out name let's make a full sentence so if we want to concatenate name to a string that we write we're gonna need the parentheses again and we could say put string ln uh, in quotations, right? For a string, your name is space. And remember to concatenate something, we can do plus plus and then the name variable. So same concept, we ask for the name. We use get line to allow them to enter their name and we store that in the name variable. And then we print out your name is and then plus the name variable that we got in from the user. So control save, control S, and then over here, we're gonna clear it, reload, and run it. Please enter your name. Uh, my name's Joe this time. Your name is Joe. Great, uh, so we've concatenated our string with a uh, user input. So now let's suppose we also wanna get an age, right? So we get the name, and then we wanna do put string ln, and that's underneath our first get line, right? So we ask for the name, we get that name, store it in a name variable, then we wanna ask for their age. So please enter your age. And then underneath, we're gonna run another get line and we're gonna store the results in this age variable with this arrow notation here. So. First we get name, we print, uh, say please enter your name. We go to a new line. We run this get line build in function, which allows the user to enter their name, stores it in this variable. Then we say, hey, please enter your age also. We run the get line function again. It again allows the user to enter something to the 
console and in this case their age and it stores it in this age variable now remember whenever we get something from the user through the console it's always going to come in as a string so in this case if age is a string remember we talked about earlier that like 36 inside of double quotes is considered a string that's how their age would come in into the age variable so we can use that string to concatenate directly with put string ln instead of what we had to do before if it were like this if it were a integer we'd have to do like show age but since it's just a string we can just concatenate it along with the rest of it so your name is plus plus name plus plus and you are space plus plus and now we're going to put in the age right and since it's already a string we don't have to do show age we can just do age plus plus space years old so now it's going to say your name is whatever they put in and you are again whatever they put in for age years old so control s to save let's go over to our win ghci clear it reload and run it please enter your name austin enter please enter your age 27 i'm going to push enter and it should print out your name is austin and you are 27 years old there it is so your name is austin it used the name variable here and you are 27 years old it used the age variable here and since age came in as a string we didn't need to use the show function along with it so that's getting user input let's go into the next thing so now we want to talk about reading a string as a number um, so to do that let's get rid of the enter your name portion and this bottom portion here and we're just going to say enter your age and then we're going to get the age right with get line and then we want to well we know age is going to be a string right so if we say put string ln age it should print out the age because it'll be like this right if they enter 22 it'll be a string with 22 inside of it it'll read it as a string so if we save it go over here reload and run just make sure that works 22 yeah and it prints out 22 so it, it interprets it as a string now let's say we wanted to take the age and do some math to it and say in 10 years you'll be this old right um, well we need the age to be a number or an integer so that we can do some math with it because you can't do math to a string in Haskell it needs to be a number so instead of doing this we can declare a variable inside of this main function remember if we declare a variable outside we could do like uh, name equals Joe and that's perfectly fine but if we're inside of the main function we need to say let name equal Joe so we're going to do that inside the main function we're going to say since we're not going to use name we're going to say let age as number equal and then we need to find a way to take this string and turn it into a number and this is where we use a built-in function that Haskell provides okay we've talked about built-in functions a little before but we'll go over it with this one so we're gonna say equals read and what read does it takes any string and it turns it into whatever we'd like to turn it into as long as it's reasonable so what I mean by that is we can read the age right so this age and we're gonna read it as an integer so this colon colon means uh, we want to cast age or read age as an integer we know it's a string but we're saying hey we now want it to be an integer and we want to store that age as an integer inside of age as a number and this might look a little odd to you but if you remember from our types video if we said like age we wanted to say age was a type it's an int and age equals 22 that doesn't look so strange right we've seen this before um so but down here now we're saying in line we're saying hey age is going to be an integer we just kind of moved its location so kind of talking over it one more time um we cast the age as an integer and we read it as that right we pass this into the read function and it spits out a result in this case the num the integer the int 22 and it stores that int inside of age as a number so we should be able to do if we do put string ln age it should throw an error or if we do ages number right because this is the now the int 
So if we do ages number, it's going to be an error because we can't put put string ln. We can't use that to print out a uh, int. So we'll try it. Save, and we should get an error. Clear. Reload. Yeah. So couldn't match int with array of char. That just means string. Um, so we couldn't int and string aren't the same thing. So we can't do that, but we can use print now and age as number should work. So save, clear, reload, right? Okay, one module loaded, run it, 22, and it prints out 22 as an int or an integer, right? So this is good. Now we wanted to print out the age 10 years later, right? We wanna say in 10 years you will be this old, right? So we can make another variable with let, and we're gonna say let uh, new age. So the person's new age equal age as a number. Remember, age as a number is now an int. So we can add 10 to that. If they pass in 22, it's going to be 32. If they pass in 32, it'll be 42. So whatever they pass in 22 plus 10. And this whole thing is gonna get stored inside of this new age uh, variable. So as an integer, right? So this whole thing gets stored inside of new age. And then we can do, <clears throat> we can print it, right? Print new age. We'll start there, make sure this works. And that's why we needed to convert it up here, right? Because we convert it to an int so that we can do math with it. Now we can print out the new age. So save, head over here, clear it, reload, run. 22 should give us 32, right? So 32 comes out. Now, if we wanted to say in 10 years, you'll be 32, right? Let's go back here. Instead of print new age, now we're back to put string ln because we want to concatenate a string with this age. So put string ln. And we're going to use parentheses here because we're going to do concatenation. And we're going to say in 10 years, you will be and now we're going to concatenate this new age right but remember new age is an integer and to turn an integer into a string we use this show built-in function so we pass this int as a as an integer to the show function it turns it into a string for us so in 10 years you will be this turns new age into a string and then years old all right, so this will, let's kind of go down this again. We get the age as a string, and then we want to do math to it. So we have to read it as an int and store it in age as a number. Then we can do math to it. So if they pass in 22, 22 and 10 is 32. And then if we want to print it back out, we have to turn it back into a string so that we can concatenate it to these other strings. Um, so read and show are kind of like opposites, right? Show is to turn something, any pretty much anything, into a string. And read is to turn a string into something specific, like a double or a float or an int or an integer, something like that. Um, so now we can save it and go over to our WinGHCI, clear it, reload, and run. Enter your age. This time we'll be 40 years old. So in 10 years, we should be 50, right? In 10 years, you will be 50 years old. Now that we know how to convert strings to numbers and back, uh, we're gonna make a basic calculator.